Hide and Seek has been one of the most popular children's games for hundreds of years. But what happens when Hide and Seek never ends? This is the story of Marjorie West. The youngest child of Shirley and Cecil West, Marjorie had two older siblings, Dorothy who was 11 and Alan who was seven years old at the time, which was May 8th, 1938. Now this was Mother's Day. So the entire family went to church on a Sunday as most families in Bradford, Pennsylvania did. And then right after they went for a picnic to celebrate what is one of the biggest commercial holidays of the year, even back in 1938. So the family drove from Bradford where they went to church to Marshburg, which was right around the corner, and they went to a park. This is a park that is surrounded by trees and woods, and it's just a clearing where families could settle down, have a picnic, have some fun games with friends, and the West family was joined by extended family. Cecil's parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and there was a lot of other people at this particular park. So the family has lunch, they play around for a bit, and shortly after they arrived at the park, Cecil goes to talk to her mother, which is just a few yards away out of eyeshot of where the children were playing. Cecil finishes the conversation with her mother, comes back to where the children are, and notices there's one missing. So where's Marjorie? At first she asks the other children, hey, where did she go? Have you seen her? Are you guys playing hide and seek? What's going on? She starts to shout for her, look for her around the perimeter, and then a little bit more frantically minutes later, and the entire family joins in looking, where the heck is Marjorie? Where is she gone? Maybe she's hiding behind a tree. Maybe she's gone into the woods. Maybe she found a really good hiding spot where just no one's ever found her yet. But after a while, it became very obvious this wasn't a game of hide and seek that hasn't been concluded yet. This was a missing person, a missing four-year-old girl in the middle of a park surrounded by people. So the police were called in and the police showed up and they started looking around. It's the middle of the afternoon at this point, getting close to evening time. And as they look around, there's just no evidence of Marjorie anywhere. No footwear, clothing, food, you nothing. Nothing at all to prove that she was even there in the first place. The police searched for a few hours and family and friends, even after the police left, were looking around. They were looking in the wooded area. They were looking on the nearby streets. They were looking basically everywhere they could think, tracing back to the church, tracing back to the family home. Where the heck is Marjorie West? Eventually, nightfall and there weren't enough flashlights, and once the ones that were available went dead, everybody had to go home. And the next morning, the police were called in again, and an official search for a missing person finally began. Police brought in scent hounds the very next day on May 9th, and they looked around, but they couldn't get a scent, no matter how hard they tried. They tried with several dogs, several areas, starting from where the picnic was, starting from the church. There was no scent of Marjorie in the first place, and therefore she couldn't be tracked. But on this day of May 9th, there was a massive manhunt. Over 3,000 civilians, people from the community, and 500 police officers. This was a 300 square mile search. They were knocking on doors, talking to shopkeepers. They were pulling over traffic, talking to pedestrians, talking to motorists, just looking for any sign or any account of what might have happened to Marjorie. She just disappeared. Children don't disappear. They don't move fast enough to run out of sight and never be seen again. It became very evident from this point, maybe she was taken by somebody else. Regardless, over five months, massive, massive searches took place. During this time, every flashlight available was put into use. Police and neighbors were knocking on doors asking to borrow flashlights in order to facilitate the search after dark. This is one of the biggest searches at the time for a missing child. This was heavily picked up by local and national news. It was in every newspaper, it was on every radio station back in 1938. And a few days later, a $2,500 reward was put in place for the information leading to finding Marjorie West. Now, 2,500 bucks might not sound like a lot to you right now, but in 1938, the average income was just over $1,500. So in today's money, this is 52 to $55,000 that this reward is. This is enough to pay for your mortgage and everything else for several years. This is a huge reward. And officially, that's where the story ends. Nobody ever seen her ever again. And of course, there are many, many theories. One of them being there are many old wells within the surrounding area of the woods. Maybe she fell in one, nobody heard her screams, and 
That's where she remains to this day. And upon other theories, there's one really interesting one that might be worth exploring. An author named Harold Thomas Beck in the 1990s wrote articles so this is 1995 and 1996. This is long after the disappearance. And he wrote articles and then he eventually wrote a book. And once he wrote the articles and they were published, he was contacted by Dorothy, the eldest daughter of Mr. and Mrs. West, Marjorie's oldest sister. Dorothy corrected some things in the story, dismissed some things in news reports from years earlier, and together they used age progression technology. It looks like Marjorie looked almost identical to Dorothy when Dorothy was that age, four years old. So they used that to make composite sketches of what Marjorie might look like today, or in the year 2000. And eventually they got several tips, and one of them, very interesting from far, far away, someone said, hey, there's someone the exact same age as Marjorie. She's my coworker, and I would love for this to be investigated. Beck eventually got in contact with this woman. This woman agreed to tell him information that maybe she's never told anybody else, contingent on the fact Beck never published the story or talked about it or revealed her identity until after she was dead. And although at first she denied and denied and denied, oh, that this is not, this couldn't be me, I couldn't be Marjorie West, Eventually, some interesting things came to light. Deep into the correspondence between Beck and this woman, who we now know as Miss London, she admitted that her mother admitted to her on her deathbed several years before that this woman was stolen from a park by her husband. Now there's varying accounts. Miss London's father reported to her mother that on Mother's Day of 1938, he had hit a little girl on the street and didn't know what to do. So he threw her in the car and then took her to Kane, which is a neighboring town, to bring her to the hospital. But she woke up and seemed like she was fine. So he just took her home. And it turns out that Miss London's parents lost their only daughter the winter before. He thought he was doing a good deed, bringing home a little girl for his wife who was still mourning the death of their daughter, Therese. Miss London also claimed that she remembered the names, Alan and Dorothy from her childhood. This was in the early 2000s up until 2005, 2006. And it was being investigated because several of Dorothy's ancestors said this could not po be possible. There is no possible way this happens, but there's no way to ask because Miss London died of cancer in February, 2009. This might be the greatest unsolved mystery of the missing. That's how it's been reported in the past. What do you think happened? Do you think she fell into a well? She was abducted and started a new life with his new family many, many miles away? Or do you think something else happened? Let me know in the comments section below. Please do hit like and subscribe and let me know in the comments section below what you wanna see in the next video. Because I do videos every weekend, that means I'll see you in the next one.